All right, so now let's look at a term we defined in an early mo earlier module, which is the valence electrons. So using the, the example we just did with neon and magnesium, let's kind of evaluate these valence electrons. So valence electrons are obviously electrons, but they're defined as those in the outermost shell. So when we say shell, we're talking about that principal quantum number. So if we go here to neon, we have two shells, one and two. Um, the outermost is the two, and there are only S and P subshells in that shell. So that is completely full because the S and P, um, that would combine to have eight. So the valence electrons are these outermost in the two, and there are eight of them, and the valence shell is n equal to two. And, um, and we also kind of look at the filling of that outermost shell. Since there is the, the S here is filled, the P here is filled, then the S, or sorry, the n equal two shell is said to be filled. That will become important here in a bit. So now let's go to magnesium. Well, we know that magnesium basically has the same structure except for two more electrons in this uh, S, or sorry, 3S, right? And so here, the outermost shell is not one, two, but three. And there are two valence electrons in that outermost shell. And so there can be more, you know, if we go back to the previous, right? So we, for three, we would have 3s, 3p, and 3d, right? So there's nothing in the uh, 3d or 3p. And so this is termed a unfilled or partially filled shell. And what we're going to see in a bit is that this is what we term unstable. So what this means practically for our elements here is that filled shells uh, in the inner um, tend to be closer to the nucleus. And as a result of being closer to the nucleus, they're more tightly bonded to it as well. And so these valence shells, which are the outermost, would obviously be further from the nucleus and less tightly bonded. And these are what have an effect in bonding. And so we're going to see this uh, in a second here. So we can make some generalities here. So valence el electrons tend to be from the S and P orbitals. However, we can occasionally see the d orbitals contribute valence electron, but for the most part, we see s and p. So for something like manganese, Mn, uh, which has a structure like this, the, um, we see that the 3d5, uh, that's partially filled, and then the s, which is part of the, the n equal 4, both of those are unfilled. And so that means that we have seven valence electrons. They're actually both from uh, n equals three and n equals um, uh, uh, n equals three and n equals four. So that means that we have um, seven valence electrons. And when we talk about bonding, uh, that means that we could potentially have uh, the removal of seven electrons. And that results in something called permanganate, which is MnO4 minus. Uh, we'll get into this more, but um, since we have seven valence electrons, these are what ac are active in bonding. And so if those are all removed, which can happen in permanganate, then uh, we would have this very high, what we call oxidation state. Okay. So let's get to sort of an introduction into to bonding then. So bonding is going to be when various atoms um, try to bond together, right? Uh, they can be from the same element or not. Uh, but the whole goal of this bonding is to try to reach a, what we termed a stable configuration. And stable means that a shell is filled. 
And so we looked at neon earlier. So this was the example, you can see it here on the periodic table. Um, and if you look up, you see that this uh, row, sorry, column, um, is defined as inert gases. So all of these on the periodic table have a similar type of filled uh, shell structure. And so these are stable or inert uh, gases. And so that's the type of configuration that every single element on the periodic table wants to have. It wants to have completely filled or completely unfilled shells, which is what these elements have. And so the way that, that this happens is if you're in this column with fluorine, chlorine, bromide, they want to, to get to that configuration, they need to add one electron. And then they'll be in this type of configuration. If you're in this column with oxygen and sulfur, you would have to add two. That's the quickest way to get to this type of configuration. Over here on the other extreme side, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, all of those want to give up one electron and that would for, um, form them into this type of configuration. And the same thing if you're one over, uh, beryllium, magnesium, calcium want to give up two, and then uh, scandium, butyrium, and all of these rare earth and uh, uh, so forth uh, elements want to give up three. And in the middle here are transition metal, um, transition metals, and so they have uh, varying states.